Hi everyone, it's Liesl. Um, uh, as promised, here is a quick show and tell slash tutorial on how I made the cover for this little cutie, which was heavily inspired by a tutorial by Sheila Y on YouTube. She used an unbelievable method, which took her ages to do and I wanted to teach this in a class. So I had to go for the 80-20 rule where you use 20% effort for 80% of the effect. So my method is not even close to as beautiful or as intricate as Sheila's, but it is a quick and dirty, which gives you an effect that at least approximates the amazing cover that she made and which I could teach in between three and four hours to um, on a Saturday afternoon in a class. So let me show you um, what I did. Firstly, I needed some book cloths. We can't really find book cloth or I can't find book cloth here in South Africa. So what I did was I followed a tutorial by C Lemon um, on YouTube. And what I did was I painted some calico because I wanted something, a fabric that was quite sturdy. I painted some calico with black acrylic paint watered down with um, quite a bit of water. And then I used heat and bond interfacing and I applied it to the fabric with an iron, pulled the backing paper off and then ironed some or what do you call it, tissue paper, onto that. And what that does is that when you use wet glue, the glue is less inclined to seep through the fabric. That's really why um, I put the heat and bond and tissue paper layer on. And here you can see where the tissue paper stopped and I started with another piece. There is a bit of tissue paper, but that's not a problem when you glue it on, it has no effect. So there you can see the tissue paper and between the tissue paper and the fabric is the heat and bond interfacing. It's a, a, a sticky substance, really. So that's how I made my book cloth. And I also used an invisible binding system, um, which Marina Wilson made a really nice tutorial on, and she is Say Something Crafty on YouTube. So I just quickly want to show you the three names so that you can go and have a look at their tutorials if you want to. Say Something Crafty, Sea Lemon, and Sheila Y. I can really recommend them. So that's a little bit of the admin out of the way. So firstly, how I did this. What I did was I was not going to have time for people to emboss paper and then paint the embossed ridges manually and so on. So what I did was I bought some pre-embossed paper. Here you can see it. It comes in A4 sheets. And then I don't have a tile, so I just took a paper plate, which I painted with some Mod Podge so that it would be slightly more durable and not absorb quite as much paint. And then I took some gold, this is just a, a craft paint that I can get here in South Africa. Um, and it's a, a kind of a pale, pale gold color. And let's hope, I'm going to take courage now and do this live, which is always a little bit scary, but there goes. Um, what I did was I used a brayer, which is this tool, and it has a little stand. So don't try and use it with this done, lift it up so that these pointy bits are showing up and I charged it relatively lightly with some of the gold ink you can see it's not a heavy layer you can see my brayer is quite dirty from use with different inks and then I ran it across the paper not pressing down too hard just like that and there you can see how the gold starts to show up the patterning on paper and really um, I'm not going to do the whole piece now you can see what I did but that's what I did I'm just pressing down lightly and running it up and down the paper and um, if you do end up with more um, paint on your brayer than you need you will get this kind of effect if I can find the piece of paper here in amongst all my bits. Yes, there it is. 
Um, this is an off cut and you can see on one of my first attempts I used quite a lot more ink on my brayer and I got some of this. I actually like that and next time if I have any effect like that I would probably use it. I think it adds a bit of texture to the, um, the paper. But that's the kind of thing that happens when your brayer is slightly too heavily loaded with um, paint. So if you do it more lightly, you get a slightly more perfect result. And I would go over this once or twice with a bit more in, um, paint just to get a slightly better coverage. But that's, that's how I made my embossed paper for the cover of the book. So really a quick, quick and dirty, <laughs> a quick and easy method to make um, embossed paper uh, to put on a book. And here are just quickly two examples of, it's the same pattern, but instead of the charcoal gray, it has a cream, um, cream colored paper. And I just use different colors of acrylic ink to get some different effects and I probably use at least one of them on a journal. So, <coughs> I beg your pardon. That's how I made the, um, the embossed paper and I just want to get rid of this craft mat because we don't need it any longer. Um, then I just quickly want to talk about the actual cover um, and how I made that. Because the spine on the inside and the outside is covered with fabric it really isn't necessary to use Tyvek because fabric is much more durable and strong than um, a paper spine which goes over the hinge because here I have a, a quarter of an inch hinge space um, and when that is only paper it takes quite a lot of strain and eventually could tear and that's why I always put Tyvek underneath however with fabric that's not necessary but in South Africa I am struggling to find proper bookboard which should not warp and what I can find is this cardboard but it warps the moment I use PVA or wet glue on it. Um, I also can't lay my hands on Fabri-Tac which I understand would also help to prevent warping. So what I did, here is my cover, you can see my spine and my front and back cover, is I took a piece of Tyvek because Tyvek is impervious to liquid um, and I cut it so that I didn't want to fold it over as I would usually do because that would add extra bulk to the little hinge which is there um, and with a layer of fabric going over there already that's enough bulk so I didn't take the Tyvek around from the outside to the inside I just cut it so that it would fit the height of the book and I cut it large enough so that it would go partially onto each of the front and back covers and cover the spine. And then onto that, I added my ridges. And by doing that, I could use a wet glue without warping my cover. What I then did, and I'll just use one of these because it's roughly the right size, is I covered the front and the back of the well, the front and back covers, with double-sided tape and gave it a little wet glue edge and then glued my decorative paper onto it and folded it over, blah, 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 made it pretty. And once they were on, my spine was still bare, I then took, and I'm just going to use this offcut that I have here, I then took some PVA glue and wet all around and added my book cloth and using the back of a brush or um, a bone tool I just went all around my little ridges to make sure that they were properly glued down. So that's really what I did and then I decided that I wanted little fabric corners because this fabric fa fabric uh, or paper is really thin and um, quite flimsy and I thought that the corners would probably take quite a lot of wear so I wanted to cover them with some of the book cloth as well so I uh, it just happened to be a three-quarter inch wide piece of fabric and I thought that was actually quite a nice width so if you want to make little corners the easiest way to do it is 
decide how wide you want the corner to be from the corner to from there across like that and double that in length so that you end up with a rectangle and if you do that and you put it down and you fold it over here you can see there is the join it makes a pretty neat join which um, doesn't detract from the aesthetic of your book so let me think what else oh doing the bit of um, gold painting I used a small brush like this and I used it dry and I charged it very lightly with ink uh, with um, the uh, gold acrylic paint and just gently dry brushed all along the edges um, here and there just to give a little bit of definition to the dark cover um, on the spine and to pick up on the gold which was used on the cover. So there, that is my two cents worth on how I made a, a very quick and not close to as beautiful version of the journal that Sheila Y shows on her YouTube channel. And I really recommend that you go and have a look. Um, but I hope that this has helped if any of you want to try something like this. It is um, quite handy and um, definitely a method that I'll be trying again. But as always, or I should say as always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if I can give you an answer, I will. Um, and until we speak again, bye-bye.